A woman can absolutely be estrogen deficient and still estrogen dominant. This is the classic description of menopause. Again, it's the relationship between the two hormones. One can be both estrogen dominant and estrogen deficient, and the reason is, is that both hormones tend to decline with time, progesterone declining faster in most cases. When a woman becomes uh, menopausal, she loses approximately half of her estrogen effect, but she loses almost all of her progesterone. So even though estrogen is deficient, she may have hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, urinary issues, she's still estrogen dominant because even that lowered amount does not have sufficient progesterone to balance it properly. Adding progesterone alone in a woman who also needs estrogen would be a mistake because she'll have the symptoms of her estrogen deficiency. So many women will need both, some progesterone and a little estrogen. Estrogen dominance, again, simply a progesterone deficiency, I believe is most successfully treated by progesterone. That's the hormone the woman is lacking. Simply treated, we simply replenish progesterone and balance that out. That's the simple way, and it works very effectively. Menopause is the cessation of menses, of a woman's menstrual periods. Basically, it is that state where uh, a woman has lost about half of her estrogen, almost all of her progesterone, her reproductive career is over, she stops ovulating, eventually the ovaries shut down. And that often is associated with a severe decline, not only in progesterone, but in, in uh, estrogen hormones. And it's important to address those deficiencies because women are generally healthy before menopause. And it's after menopause that there is a rapid increase in problems of sleeping, mood changes, memory changes, bone loss. Mood swings, hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, loss of romantic moods and inclinations. And women have an increased risk of heart disease when those hormones drop because of a pro-inflammatory effect of having low hormones. So these hormones aren't just optional players that we need when we're younger. We need these hormones throughout our life to have a healthy body. And I might say it's very important when we do hormone replacement, it's always important to replace the other hormones that decline as well. So we often will add a little bit of desiccated thyroid hormone, some adrenal support using cortisol. And all those are very important in balancing out the hormones because hormones work together synergistically. The imbalance that occurs in female hormones as a woman marches through her menstrual life inevitably leads to symptoms of hypothyroidism. When you're low on progesterone, you actually will adversely affect the thyroid gland because without balancing the estrogen effect, you will have excessive thyroid binding globulin made. That ties up circulating thyroid and so you have a net effect of having low thyroid. And also at the cell level when you have an imbalance, estrogen dominance, you're not going to be able to convert T4 to T3 as efficiently. So you have low thyroid use at the cell level and you have less reaching the cells. And that needs to be addressed and often just with some progesterone, women will see their low thyroid symptoms improve. I believe unbalanced hormones, hormone imbalance, is one of the main causes of cancer. We know, in fact, that women who have the lowest progesterone levels have a dramatically higher rate of cancer. We see from a study in the early 1980s, the American Journal of Epidemiology, women that didn't ovulate, therefore women that did not make progesterone, had a 540% increase in breast cancer and a 1,000% increase in overall cancer mortality. Those are astounding numbers from, as far as we can tell, one hormone deficiency, progesterone deficiency. That would imply that if we balance progesterone levels, we should be able to make a tremendous impact on the incidence of cancer. We could decrease it significantly if we were very conscientious at making sure that we address low progesterone levels. So we know that hormonal decline and hormonal imbalance is correlated with and associated with an increased risk of cancer. The converse of that is true. Men and women who have optimal levels of their hormones, physiologically optimal levels of hormones, have a dramatically decreased risk of cancer, of developing cancer. When you're out of balance, your adrenal gland, which responds to the stress of the imbalance, tries to compensate. 
Many of the folks that we see have been struggling with issues for years and have often developed what is referred to as adrenal fatigue where there is inadequate cortisol being produced to meet the body's needs. The stress involved in feeling poorly from hormonal decline uh, can affect the, um, the adrenals. They'll have to work harder to secrete more cortisol. Tissues that work harder simply wear out faster. So hormonal imbalance in females, hormonal imbalance of the sex hormones, adversely affects not only the thyroid, leading to functional hypothyroidism, but also adversely affects the adrenal glands, leading to low levels of cortisol and adrenal fatigue. The aging process is the inevitable decline of our natural occurring hormones. As they decline, we develop the chronic diseases of aging, heart disease, obesity or being overweight, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, and ultimately then polypharmacy takes over where we're treated by conventional doctors with a host of drugs trying to treat all these other problems, which are simply a result of the decline in our natural occurring hormones. So if you want to maintain good health and live a longer, healthier life, it's been shown clinically through numerous hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of studies using natural occurring bioidentical hormones that you can extend life and extend the quality of life by keeping hormones uh, at an optimal level. I think those thoughts reveal the concerns people have as a result of the conventional approach that uses largely counterfeits and does not use progesterone. I think in terms of hormonal dose, uh, thinking optimally. What's my optimal dose? What is the dose at which I feel the best and the dose at which I function the best? I would not want to do that for the shortest amount of time. I would want to do that for the optimal amount of time. I think saying that hormones are dangerous fall into the same category as saying your hair is dangerous for you. I was born with my hair. I grew up with my hair. My hair belongs there. I'm designed to have it and the same is true for hormones. We start making hormones before we're ever born. They're safe enough for an unborn child. In the proper doses and ratios, I believe they're safe enough for anyone. We know that hormones are associated with health. What we want to stay away from are the things that are the counterfeit hormones, the fault structures, the things that are used that do not belong in our body. That's what is dangerous. Aging is natural. It's not healthy. I think aging is natural. My hair grows naturally, but I cut it. My nails grow naturally, but I cut them. We have droughts, but we water our lawns. So natural things occur. But I think it's important to define what's really normal when you're talking about hormonal loss. The decline of our hormones leads to a host of health problems. It's like saying uh, in the summer, in the middle of a drought, well, it's natural. I'm not going to water the yard. We'll just let the flowers die because it's natural. No, you replenish the groundwater so your plants don't die, so they stay vibrant and green and they grow. Uh, same thing uh, with hormone therapy and hormone decline. As your hormones decline, you want to replenish your hormones. You have hormone replenishment therapy. We compensate for the fact that we live with a condition of decay all the time. We're constantly compensating for things. We're cutting our grass, we're cleaning our closet, we're brushing our teeth, we're taking baths. And putting back in the hormones that are declining simply maintains health for a longer period of time so that we can be productive and healthy.